Okay, so let's take a look. Back to by grouping means you're going to group stuff. Right, so let's see, what can I group? Well, I'm going to group these first two, and then circle the sign, and then group the last two. So what can I pull out of the first two? Here we can pull out of the first two, back to that, and then and then do the sign, and then figure out what that needs to be what you pull out. Needs to be a sign of what you pull out of the last the last two. So what can I pull out of the first two? What can I pull out of the last two? And what you pull out should be the same. Right. So then you pull you can pull that out of both of those groups. Let's take a look at C. So again, remember C is the regular one. You need to do your factor by group, you need to do your regular factoring, so do your little diamond method, the AC method. But you, because this is not a one in front, there's a number in front, you have to do that extra step, either the box or the factor by grouping. Mm -hmm. So start off with, you know, your sort of, um, you know, this thing here. Right, so the A times C plus B thing, right? So A times C, figure out what number goes there. The two numbers have to multiply to this number and have to add to whatever your B is, right? Write down what your B is and find those two numbers. Once you find those two numbers, then you can either do the box method. Box method, I'm going to take the first number, the 2x squared, put it here. The last number, the negative 3 here, and then my two x's are going to be whatever numbers I get here are going to go into there. Or you can do the factor by grouping method. Also totally reasonable. This is the box. Here's the grouping. The grouping. You're going to write down your first spot, 2x squared. You're going to write the big gap in the, your last spot, minus 3, and then inside of here is going to go your pieces. The, you know, the, the, whatever you got from, from these two spots is going to go into these two places here. Or it's going to be, again, what you got from there. So you can do either one of those. But remember, figure out what those two numbers are that multiply to A times C and add to whatever B is. So figure out A times C is or figure out B is. What's A times C? Well, we'll go over that in a minute. I'll, 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 I'll. No. Yeah, everyone figure out what they think A times C is. All right, so my A times C, 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. Then 2 is a multiply to negative 6 and add to whatever B is. What's B? 5. 5. So you need to find two numbers that multiply to <coughs> multiply to negative 6 and add to 5. Remember, since this is negative, the only way that two numbers multiply to a negative is if one's positive, one's negative. So their difference has to be six. So keep that in mind. Now once you find them, put them either into the box method or the grouping method yeah. to solve. The and yeah, these are going to be x's as well. Thank you. 
I think I know. I just don't know if this is the final. Check it with your neck, with your, yeah. with your so you forgot the two. group mates. You do. Okay, so I need two numbers that multiply to negative 6 and add to 5. So when you go through all my options, you can see I've got 2 and 3. But here's the thing. So 2 and 3 multiply to 6, and 6 and 1 multiply to 6. But since this is a negative, that means the difference between them has to be 5. So 6 and 1 have a difference of 5, so it's going to be 6 and 1. Which one has to be negative? To add to 5, it has to be, the 1 has to be negative. All right, so you can either put them into here, negative 1x and 6x, or you can put them into here, negative 1x and 6x plus 6x. Either one is fine. Um, and then you need to sort out how to factor them. We'll do by grouping first. So if I'm going to group them, I'm going to do this one. And then here's the sign, and then I do that one. So what can I pull out of 2x squared and negative 1x? We're going to pull out of 6x minus 3x. If you're still working on this, keep working on it and ignore my box method stuff. So those of you who are still working on this one, David, keep working on this and ignore the box method stuff. Just keep working on that. All right, so we're, we'll do the box method here. What can I factor out of 2x squared and negative 1x? Uh, just x. What can I factor out of 2x squared and 6x? 2x. Everyone, everyone kind of okay with that part? What can I factor out of 6x and negative 3? Uh, 3. What can I factor out of negative 1x and negative 3? So if, if this main first guy here is negative, then I would try to maybe try to make it negative. So I can't factor out anything. So I just can't factor out a negative 1. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Or I can factor out, if you try factoring in a positive one, here's an interesting check. I can try factoring a positive one, but then when I go to, to check it and say, does 2x times x give me 2x squared? Yes. Does 1 times 3 give me negative 3? No. So it means 1 just has to be negative. All right, and so since this is kind of... So mm -hmm. is it, that part is a, a little bit shaky on the sign, but if both boxes have a negative, then you can take it out, but if only one box has a negative, you cannot take it out, right? No, you, you can, but you have to sort of... Um, you have to sort of, yeah, I, that, that would be the best way of doing it. If both boxes have a negative, then that would be, that, that would be, that would be the best way of doing it. Because I think, cause, yeah, because I was just, yeah. had to play with it and check it sometimes, right. you know, when I was doing the homework. That is the I, easiest way of doing it. Um, sometimes there might be a situation where, uh, where these are both negatives. So you have to sort of, see what I do is I do the first one. I do, it, I do it more like this. That's why I don't do it, I don't do it boxes, but I do it like this. I say, okay, so I pull out the x and then say, what times x gives me 2x squared? 2x. And then 2x times what gives me 6x? 2x times 3 gives me 6x. Mm. And then I have that problem. Then x times what gives me negative 1x? x times negative 1 gives me, gives me, um, negative one x, and then check to make sure that these two multiplied together gives me this. Oh. So that's why I do it that way, because it just it saves me that, that issue. Yeah, you, you start by just pulling the first box out and then the rest you times. Uh, yeah. Everything multiplied. Yeah, and say, yeah, what times this gives me that? Okay. So then I have my numbers. I have two x minus one, and then I have x plus three. Now if you did the factor by grouping, then this is what you should have. So David, this is what you should have on yours as well, factor by grouping, what can I pull out 2x squared and minus x? I can pull out x. And I'm left with 2x minus 1. And then you got the plus, don't forget, you got to bring the plus down. What can I pull out of 6x and negative 3? I can pull out 3. I'm left with 2x minus 1. So now they both have a 2x minus 1. I can pull that out of both of them. And I'm left with the stuff, um, with the rest of it, which is x plus 3. And you'll see those are the exact same answers. Either one, you get the same thing either way. There can be an opposite. There can be an opposite um, side. You can have the you know the x plus three first and the two x minus one second. It doesn't matter. As long as you have those two factors in either order, 
All good. If I roll one X plus three, is that going to get three? Sure, that's fine. Oh, okay. No problem. All right, so was that the, um, that was C? All right, so we're skipping 10. Let's go back to one then. Let's take a look at one. Use the graph of f of x equals square root of x, or f of x equals cube root of x is your starting point. Translate them. Okay, so we're going to go 2 to the left and 3 up. So remember, we start at 0, 0, and I'm going to go 2 to the left and 3 up. Here's going to be my new origin right there. Everybody with me on that part? So then, it's a square root. So you got to figure out what are my other three points I know. Once I have my starting point, it's a square root. Remember, it's the over one up one, over four up two, over nine up three. You need to know that somewhere. So have that in your notes somehow. And then this one over here is going to be a similar thing. So your origin, we're going to shift four to the right and one unit down. That's going to be our new center. And then it's a cube root. So the square root, is that the swoosh or the S? Which one is it? Swoosh. Swish. The cube root, is that the swish or the S? S. S. The cube root is the S. So those are all things that you should have down in your notes if you don't know them. All right, so find your other, find your other four points here, and then over here, find your five points there. And then write down the domain and the range. Let's see, so our other points are from, so this is our swoosh, right? This is a swoosh, this one is an S. So here, from our origin, we go, or from our new, new center, we go right one up one, right four up two, right nine up three. And then we have our new point there. Um, the question, the next question was, I think it was domain and range, is that right? Is that all it asks? New function. Oh, the new function? Yeah. Oh, great. So what's my new function? I slip four to the left is, is, so here's g of x. If I do two to the left and three up, is left on the inside or the outside? Left, right, is that the inside or is it on the outside? The inside. It's on the inside. So remember, since whenever it's on the inside, then that's when we switch the signs, because it's right inside where x is. So left means what, plus or minus? Plus. plus. So on the inside, I'm going to do x plus 2. Inside, x plus 2. And then 3 up is up, down on the inside or the outside? Up down from the outside. Outside. So on the outside, I just do up three. Oh, sorry. Two to the left. My bad. That's supposed to be two. Two. And then on the outside, up three. Good. All right. So then the next part is, was it domain and range? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Domain. So that's my left, right. How far left does this go? Negative two. Negative two. How far right does it go? Yeah. Infinity. So you can never equal infinity. Can I equal negative two? Yeah. Yes. Okay, good. Range. What's the lowest I go? Three. Three. What's the highest I go? Infinity. Infinity. Can I equal three? Yes. Okay. So we'll take a look at the next one. Or do you folks want a minute for the next one? So I got the formula down for the next one, the, the how is it, the formula for the D? Everybody has that already? Yes, no? Yeah. Yes, no? Okay. All right. So, so if I call on anybody, they'll be able to give it to me. Check with your neighbors. Make sure you have it.
Because you just got to get the points. Like, we got to run the points. Yeah. yeah, this is always a good thing. Okay. So, shifted. So, I start off the origin. And my new century is four to the right and one down. So, one, two, three, four to the right and one down. That's my new center. Do it in red. Right? This is my old. Start off with the origin. So we go four to the right, one down. And then what are my what are my other points in relation to this one? It's over one up one, over eight, up two, back one down one, back eight, down two from my new origin. So then I end up with something that looks kind of like this. More or less, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. What's my Let's see, four to the right, one down. So here's my g of x. Um, again, this cube root is left, right on the inside or the outside? Inside. inside. So and remember, it's opposite. So four, be, four to the right means x. Help me out, guys. Minus, Minus, Minus four. four, great. And then one unit down is on the inside or the outside? Outside, outside so it's going to be on the outside, minus one. Make sure you have it cubed here. Right? It's got to be a cube root. This is on the inside, underneath the square root symbol. It's on the outside. No, not inside the square root symbol. So it's on the outside part. Good? All right, so what's my domain and my range? For the S? Yeah, infinity, infinity, it's all real numbers. My domain for the S, all real numbers, negative infinity to positive infinity. My range for the S, same thing, all real numbers, negative infinity to positive infinity. from number, I feel like we could do some more from number four. Or three. Does anyone want to do any ones for three? Or we did some threes already today maybe? So we don't want to do three or do you want to do some threes? Check one from number three we want to work on. Um, how about Um, how about we do B? D? And um, F. How's it sound? F. Just to kind of remind ourselves of things. So B, D, and F, let's work on those ones. And uh, Natalia, um, keep track of the ones we're doing in class today so that we don't do redo the same ones on tomorrow, next class. I'll rely upon you here. Reliable. So what are some differences? First thing, see where it says solve up top? I can only solve, the difference between simplify and solve is I can only solve when I have an equal sign. When I have an equal sign, I can say x equals blank. The stuff we did before, let me show you those ones I'm talking about here. Um, did someone see this where it says simplify? There's no equal sign here. Someone see these? There's no equal sign. So all I can do is take some stuff out or you know, try to pull things out of jail, that sort of thing. I can't solve it and say x equals or a equals something because there's no equal sign. So now we have something where x equals something. We can say what x is. So what I want to do is figure out, well, okay, 
I have a square root thing. I need to figure out what x is. I need to undo what's been done to x. What's been done to x? Say your x. The first thing that happens to x is you subtract 3, and then what would you do with it? Square root it. Remember, we have to undo things in the opposite order. So for when I leave the house, I first I put on my socks, then I put on my shoes. When I come home at night, I do not take my socks off first. When I undo stuff, I do it in the opposite order. I take off my shoes first, then my socks. So you undo the last thing first. You undo the square root first. So what you want to do is here, undo the square root first, and then do the minus 3. How do you undo a square root? By squaring, exactly. So we want to get the square root by itself, and then square both sides. Here, um, first I multiply by 3, then I subtract 5, then I square root, then I multiply by negative 3. So I'd have to do an opposite order. Get rid of this, multiply by negative 3 first. You've got to get the square root symbol by itself first. So make sure you get, I want to look up, make sure you get the square root symbol by itself first. In other words, get rid of this minus 3 in front. Am I adding negative 3 or am I multiplying by negative 3? Is it negative 3 times this or negative 3 plus this? Eric, is it negative 3 times this or negative 3 plus this? Times. Times. So how do you undo times? Oh. Divide. Does that make sense? Okay. Right. okay. Good. So we will work on those two. You want to put one thing out. So say you have, like we all know that that square root of 9 is equal to 3. Right? So if I square one side and don't square the other side, I'd end up with square root of 9 squared would be 9. 9 is not equal to 3. I square, if I square one side, I have to square the other side as well. So when you do the one side, you have to do the other side, otherwise it's not correct. So this one becomes, I'm going to square both sides. I'll get x minus 3 equals 4. Add 3 to both sides, I get x equals 7. Mm -hmm. Here first I have to divide both sides by negative 3. And I end up with square root of 3x minus 5 equals negative 1. I right, have to divide by. We're going to square both sides. Oh, yeah, so you divide by negative 1. You end up with 3x minus 5 equals 1. Add 6 to both sides. 3x equals 6. Divide both sides by 3. You get x equals 2. Okay, and then we'll do the last one. We'll do the next one next time. We'll do this next time. Oh, but I do want to put one thing out on this one. Here, instead of Squaring both sides because it's cube root. Well, I'll do this one quickly. I'm going to cube both sides. The opposite of cube rooting is cubing. So x equals negative 3 to the third power, negative 27. That's actually pretty easy. All right. Have a good day. I will see you folks on Wednesday. So no, no school.